Welcome to Where Parents Talk. My name is Leanne Castellino. Our guest today is a Canadian sports journalist, current studio host at Hockey Night in Canada, and the NHL on Sportsnet. He has previously reported for on a variety of sports, including the Olympic Games, the Stanley Cup, and the World Series for TSN, ESPN, and the NHL Network. David Amber is also a father of two. He joins us today from Toronto. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. So this is, I take it, your first um, interview on parenting. Thank you for t- <laughs> for being the first. <laughs> I wonder, as the father of a 17-year-old and a 16-year-old, generally, what are your views on being a parent today in 2022 with everything going on in the world as it is? Um, first of all, Leanne, I got to tell you, I, I mentioned to my kids that I was doing the podcast interview with you, and they got a good chuckle out of it because they, <laughs> they actually expressed some interest. I'm like, a, I said, well, I'm going to get asked about parenting. They, and my daughter said, well, they should probably ask me how you are as a parent, not you. <laughs> so there you go. Um, it's great to be here. As far as today goes, I think the words that come to mind are it's, it's challenging but rewarding, which are the two words that come to mind. I, I think it's probably a very unique time to be a parent coming out of the pandemic. And you think about the last few years for all of our kids and all the things they've missed, all the adjustments they had to make. And, and I think about my daughter who went off to university. We both had daughters go off to university in the last few months. And, um, you know, I, I just think they were kind of stripped a little bit of their independence for a couple of years. And I think it might've made the adjustment initially a little bit more difficult than it might've been for you or for me in our generation. Certainly I remember being so excited to go off to school and I think she maybe felt a little bit of trepidation, you know, just because it had been such a different two and a half years uh, with the pandemic. So I think there's been some unique challenges at this era of of parenting. Um, But at the same time, you know, the greatest rewards you're going to feel as a person are, you know, when your kids have a great day and accomplish something and, and show some grit and determination and, and, you know, sort of strive for what they want to do and show great passion and things. And it's funny, you don't realize that till you become a parent, right? It's, uh, you, you think about your own joy. And then when you have a child and then sort of experience their joy, it's on a whole nother level. Without question. And, and that is so rewarding for sure. Let me ask you, you've got a 17 year old daughter and a 16 year old son. Have you always wanted to be a father, David? Um, I, you know, that's a tough question. I I certainly always thought about being a dad. So I don't know if that whole uh, paternal instinct was there from day one. But I certainly, you know, I've always liked, you know, I remember when I was sort of in grade six, seven, there were some grade twos and threes, I used to kind of mentor a little bit or be able to kind of uh, chaperone around a little bit. And I had that sort of like, uh, felt good to be in that leadership role to someone and and mentoring them in in a different way that not exactly being a parent, but just that that feeling. So I guess it's always been a little bit a, a part of me and I always knew I wanted to have a family. So it's, it's nice that it's happened. In what ways would you say that your childhood has impacted the way that you parent? Well, I, I guess the number one thing would be, I think I, I think back to when I was a kid and the things that made me most excited or most uplifted or most interested. And uh, I try to bring those thoughts and memories and say, well, how can my kids have those same opportunities? So in my case, I played a ton of sports growing up in hockey and and baseball and football. And um, my wife's very athletic too. She played a lot of different sports. And so we tried to get our kids into different sports or into different things that they're interested in, passionate about. My, My daughter took to sport, but she really took to performing. So we were like, okay, well then let's, you know, push towards that a little bit with her singing and her performance. And I think that was something that I, I remember from my childhood that the moments I loved and embraced the most were those hockey tournaments and those those moments. And I said, okay, well, hopefully we can replicate some of that with our kids. Absolutely. I can relate to the hockey parent piece for mm-hmm. sure. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. Um, you talk about your childhood, you talk about maybe not having a a pronounced paternal instinct. But the fact is, is, you know, you've got two kids, there's a whole pile of responsibility that goes with that. You've got a very busy, dynamic career that's, you know, time uh, demanding from that perspective. So how do you go about trying to balance all of that out, especially when they're in their developmental years as, as teenagers? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a struggle that so many families deal with, right? There's so many, um, you know, two parent working families, or single parent families, and they're they're trying to manage. Like, of course, you have to have the career, and you want to follow, you know, chase something and be passionate about something on your professional side. But at the same time, you don't want to sacrifice anything uh, in your personal life. 
I don't know if we've reached the perfect balance. You'd have to ask my kids that. But one thing I've said to them from day one, and I've, I've tried to live up to this, is when I'm not working, I'll be there. So, you know, it's sometimes, to be honest with you, working nights and weekends and, and lots of holidays as someone who's a sports broadcaster. Yes, you miss a lot of dinner parties on a Saturday night and you do miss some some uh, kids events as well. But at the, you know, the, the alternative uh, side of things, there were some 2 p.m. track meets when I'd be the only parent there. Um, you know, there was some some off time, you know, certainly a lot of three o'clock and four o'clock post school soccer matches, et cetera. Um, I would make sure I'd be there. So I've said to my kids, I'll, I'll get to every single thing I can get to. And, and often, um, you know, I think they understood it wasn't going to be easy and I missed some things along the way. But I, I tried my best to, to make sure I could fit in as much as possible and make it a priority. You talk about missing key events uh, over time. I wonder, because I know it's totally different for, for mothers on this topic, but guilt. Do you feel guilt as a father, David? And if so, how do you deal with that? I'm going to answer this honestly. I don't <laughs> feel a lot of guilt. I feel bad saying that, but I, I don't because I, I sort of said I work within the parameters I can and take the good. I've sort of said when things are out of your control, I can't control when the schedule of, of the events are that I'm covering. <laughs> Uh, everything I can control, I can do my best to make sure I'm I'm right there, I'm present, I'm in the moment with the kids. And they've seen the efforts there. I mean, I remember one one Saturday night I was in Winnipeg uh, at a hockey rink in Winnipeg, and my son had a hockey tournament um, near Buffalo. And I took a 5 a.m. flight from Winnipeg to Toronto and then jumped in a car and drove two hours to make, make it to the final. I made it on time, thankfully. So I think they understood there were sacrifices made. But I, I don't know if that is a, a gender-specific feeling because my wife who has a, a pretty serious job, much more demanding in many respects than my job. Uh, she does feel a certain you know, level of guilt when she isn't able to, to be there for every uh, last thing. So I, I just sort of said, we can control what we can control and, and I'm not gonna you know, you know, punish myself uh, for that. And I think my kids have been more than understanding that you know, putting the effort in is, is the most important thing. Absolutely. David, how would you go about uh, describing your parenting approach? Well, you know, Leah, it's funny. I, I say to my kids a lot, um, everything in moderation. So, you know, I don't have a specific approach. You know, it's not like I'm a disciplinarian or I'm not like a loosey goosey. Let's hang out. And there's there's always going to be boundaries, but uh, certainly when they were younger. But I think it's everything in moderation. You know, when your kids are young, yeah, we can go get an ice cream, but we're not going to go get an ice cream every day or whatever the example might be. Um, or, you know, yes, you, you're going to have to do homework or da, 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 but we're going to, we're also going to mix in some fun. Like I try to make it. So, you know, I kept, I would say to my daughter a lot when she was at 12 and 13 and, you know, we butt heads as well. I say, be reasonable, just be reasonable. So I, I think I've tried to take sort of what I would, you know, describe as a reasonable approach to parenting and try and, um, you set boundaries and, you know, you, you hope that they understand them. Um, and as they get older, they certainly understand and respect um, you know, why you probably did things that they didn't always agree with. Um, but I thought everything in moderation and, you know, when it comes to things, when they get to teenagers drinking and things of that sort, you know, I wasn't going to take that approach of you don't drink and don't do this. It's like, look, I know these things are going to be present for you and there's going to be different um, choices to make. And you try and give them the judgment to make smart choices, choices that aren't going to, you know, become problematic for them, you know, whether from a personal safety standpoint or, uh, you know, in in that nature, that's the number one thing. So I've, you know, I think my wife and I have tried to impress good decision making uh, as best possible on our kids, and and you kind of cross your fingers and hope for the best. Yeah, on some level, that is exactly what you know. The secret recipe, I guess, is you have to go with with your gut feeling and hope that you've done all the right things. Along those lines, David, you know, I wonder, um, those of us in the trenches of parenting on a daily basis know that there is no playbook for this stuff, right? Um, do, do you do research? Did you do research before becoming a dad? Like, who do you rely on to kind of maybe be a mentor, for lack of a better word, or to be a guide in raising these little human beings into, you know, uh, responsible adults? Well, we've been really lucky. We have a, a really strong network of friends and many of them had kids in the year or two or three before us. So we had a lot of advice uh, solicited and unsolicited about what it's going to be like when you become a parent. And, and they, everyone says it right. You're never going to be ready. People can tell you every, oh, it's like this, it's like this until you're sitting there and there's a baby in your arms and a, a dirty diaper and they're going crazy at two in the morning. You don't know what that's like. You can't prepare 
uh, for those situations. But we did have a lot of people sort of, um, you know, keep good advice on us and, and sort of prepare us for certain things. Um, I'd say the biggest adjustment, I don't know about you, Leanne, but for me, having our daughter was uh, an adjustment, certainly a lifestyle adjustment. But having our son 20 months later, so we had then, you know, like a three-year-old and a one-year-old, that, that the first six months of that, it was just about, you know, keeping your head above water. You're treading water for a while mm -hmm. there. Just, you know, it's amazing what your body can do on little sleep and uh, you get through it. But it, it was, you know, if I think about the most difficult time parenting, um, and obviously, you know, when they're teenagers, that's a whole nother ball of wax. But um, the most difficult time, if I had to really look back at it in many respects, certainly the physical toll and maybe even the mental toll it took was when, you know, we had a three and a one year old or a four and a two year old where there's high, high, high demands. They're not at school yet. And, you know, 24 seven, you're kind of on high alert. And, you know, we had our daughter, our son was waking up in the middle of the night a bunch of times and our daughter at you know 6 a.m. All right, I'm ready to go. Let's party. And it's like, oh, my goodness, how are you going to get through this? So. Um, you know, you get a lot of different advice. Nothing's going to prepare you perfectly for it, but I think you, you manage, you find a way. And, uh, and it's, again, it's the, the best, most rewarding, you know, challenge you're going to face in your life. You're bringing back all these memories for me, David, of <laughs> when my kids were young that I only recently, you know, finally dealt with in terms of that sleep deprivation that just seems to be endless. In our case, we had three um, wow. in our household. So I, I told you. Two felt like three. <laughs> That's my point. I think one it was, one was manageable, but when, when we had the second one, I was like, oh, wow, this, this is no joke. Yeah. yeah. Um, so another sort of interesting aspect of what you experience as a parent, I'm, I'm thinking, is the idea of being a celebrity uh, and, you know, being a dad as well. How do you go about managing that? Has that been challenging? Uh, is there a different sort of approach you use as a result of that? Okay, if my kids were here, they would be laughing hysterically at this question because the uh, I don't consider myself much of a celebrity and they certainly don't. They, they always, they let me know that on a pretty regular basis that I'm a D-lister at best. <laughs> uh, it, it hasn't been a, a big issue. You know, sometimes certainly, um, you know, you're out at your kids' events or at their school and, you know, I've spoken at both their schools at different times for different occasions. And I think they take it all in stride. They, they, you know, they just look at me as the goofy dad. They don't really think of me in any other different fashion. So uh, they get a good kick out of that. It hasn't been a big issue um, at all. You know, I think at times it's it's been fun for them. We're out at a sporting event and people recognize you. They think it's kind of, they think the whole thing's kind of funny, but um, hasn't really been a, a huge part of, of raising them at all. Now, the other thing that's really interesting as well, I find, because I know probably your parents, well, not probably your parents and my parents did not have to deal with this when we were young, is the wild world of social media. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, how do you deal with that? Are there, you talked about boundaries and parameters and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's the wild west, as you well know, <laughs> uh, on social and on the internet, what does that look like in your house in terms of, you know, what those rules and regulations may look like? Well, there's no playbook on this, right? We're the first generation sort of figuring this out. And, um, you know, it, there is no perfect solution for it. You know, whether we were too loose about things or too strict about things that, that we'll find out, I guess, down the road, um, because this is the first generation going through social media. I, I think we tried again and we talked about judgment. You know, we, I think, my wife would always say, you know, that you don't want to have anything out there that your grandmother wouldn't want to see. Essentially, it's probably good, uh, a bit of a rule you can use. But it, it's it's difficult. And I, I feel for the kids because trying to navigate through all the social media, you know, it, it's not easy. Uh, it is not easy. And I, I'm happy that we didn't have to deal with that as kids ourselves. So I don't think we had a, a strict playbook. Uh, I think we like to have a sense of what our kids are doing, um, you know the kids are always smarter and I don't even mean my kids specifically, but the kids are always smarter than the adults when it comes to, well, I follow them on Instagram and Snapchat. I, I know what they're up to. Well, they have like five and six different accounts. They have ways of managing if they don't want you to know exactly who they're talking to or what they're doing uh, on social media. So again, I think it's a matter of you have a level of trust with your kids and you try and kind of understand that there'll be a level of accountability and there's certainly going to be consequences potentially to something they do online, that that's their, you know, fingerprint for the rest of their lives. You know, my wife will bring up, you know, a former, a future employer is going to know what your Instagram looks like, what your Twitter looks like, your whatever social media you're on. So I think you try and impress that upon them. And, and again, you hope you're raising kids that have a level of uh, empathy, a level of, um, 
you know, understanding they're not going to be doing things that uh, would put them in danger, or put others in a bad situation either. So that's what we're hoping for. And, and I, I think there's not a really a, a rule book for it, but certainly just hopeful, good judgment. You know, one of the aspects of parenting that I continue to find challenging in many ways um, is the idea of having those boundaries, having accountability, but then the piece about the follow through on any sort of uh, rule breaking that happens and sort of, you know, discipline that has to occur. What would you say has been the most challenging piece of parenting for you, David? Well, you bring up a good point. There certainly has to be consequences. Uh, you know, you can't have idle threats and not back them up because, you know, you're not going to condition your kids in a great fashion if they do things that they shouldn't be doing and they just, there are no consequences to those actions. Uh, the most challenging part, uh, I, I guess, is just you make mistakes and you have to understand, like, you know, it's funny, we all can sit there and critique our parents and how they parented us, you know, and we're very good at uh, pointing out, well, that you didn't do this, you didn't do that. And then you become a parent, you realize how difficult um, the journey is. So I think you just have to understand there's going to be mistakes along the way, you have to try and have as close a relationship with your kids as possible. So there's a level of trust uh, and a level of care and, and empathy and, and, and compassion both ways, right? You want your kids to care for you as well, and maybe understand why you you know, have you know, curfew at this time, or you need to you know different rules and regulations within your house. Um, and I think just getting that bond with your kid is is maybe the most critical thing. Um, and it starts at an early age. And I've been lucky enough to have a, a really close relationship with both my children. And and you know, we laugh more than anything else. And I think that's a really key thing. Um, I, I guess the challenge really is to get that bond early on and to to let that really cultivate and nourish into something special and it makes parenting easier because you have it's not necessarily a friendship but i think you maybe if nothing else have an understanding of the the nature of your relationship as a, a parent and a child well and it does sound like you have and your wife have prioritized sort of that healthy relationship and it's been, been foundational to the relationship that you continue to have with your children you know in, in preparing for this interview something that struck me about sort of what you do for a living is you interview a lot of people in the age group that your kids are now in, right? Like, exactly. you know, late teens, uh, approaching early 20s. And I wonder, you know, anything in terms of what you see there in those interviews with that sort of behavior in that world that impacts your approach as a dad or that you're, you're maybe taking notes and saying, hmm, you know, yeah. I got to file that away um, at some well, point. You know what, Leon, that's a, that's a really interesting point. And it wasn't always the case. Like my daughter's almost 18, my son's 16. And you're right, there's going to be a bunch of NHL players this year, a handful of them at 18 are going to be in the NHL. And you kind of that blows your mind, right? I think about my daughter. And, you know, she's a mature young lady, but she's still a kid in many respects. And then here these um, young uh, professionals are out, you know, living out their dream. If nothing else, it probably, from a professional standpoint, maybe I can take a step back when we're so incredibly hypercritical, which is what we tend to be in the, you know, it's a very uh, intense field, the professional sports field, and the demands are incredibly high, and it's a, a results-oriented industry. But we have to remember at the end of the day, some of these young young people are they're, they're quite young, you know, and they're still figuring things out. You know, and you see this in tennis when they're 16 and 17 year olds playing professional tennis. And you go, my God, like at such an early age to have that amount of pressure heaped on them. Uh, and, and if nothing else, maybe it's given me the opportunity to reflect a little bit that these are young people and to maybe hold off some of the criticism or at least um, understand, you know, that they're such a youthful you know, situation, but sports has gotten so much younger. Like I work in the national hockey league and the NHL is as young as it's ever been. You know, if you're 30 in the NHL, you're considered like a grizzled old veteran now. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes you have to take a step back and having two teenagers, I, I kind of, I, I can see it a little bit better now and a little clearer, like, wow. Um, yes, their the expectations are incredibly high, but we have to also sometimes maybe temper them a little bit and understand what some of the, you know, things these, these young men and women are going through. It's a really, a really interesting point for sure. David, I'm curious, uh, what is your most proud parenting moment from, from each of your son and daughter as you reflect back on it? Oh my goodness. That's, that's <laughs> tough because there's been, you know, and I'm, I'm, that's a really tough question, Leanne. I'm sure if I would turn the question on you, I'd like to hear your answer because that is <laughs> so many times when just you beam with pride, you know, obviously if I'm going to use sort of 
recent memory of my daughter, uh, the day she got into the university of her choice, um, you know, she was elated because it's so competitive and so difficult. And I was so happy for her. And she worked incredibly hard through really tough circumstances during the pandemic to make sure academically she would be in as good a position as possible uh, to get into the school she wanted to get into. So I would, that was a really proud moment for us as a family because I realized I sat here and we, we saw the sacrifices she was making and the work she was putting in. And I think that was just a great lesson for her about that's sort of how life works, right? The more you put into something, uh, the better off it'll be that experience for you. Um, my son, there's a whole, you know, number of different things he's done, you know, both athletically, which has been a lot of fun for me to watch as a parent and um, just the young man he's become. Um, he's a bit of a social justice warrior in many respects. And he'll come home and tell us some great stories about, uh, debates they had within his classroom at school and the approach he took and the side he took and and how we articulated and that just makes me really proud then you go and you have teacher meetings and they have really great things to say about him and and you just think wow we're raising a, a good young man so that brings me you know a great deal of pride and um, there's a number of, of different circumstances if I go way back into the archives the the day our son finally became potty trained was a good one for us mm -hmm. it took a little while time so I was like okay Finally. All right. You're on your own now. <laughs> so, uh, that was a, a proud, I, was, I remember high-fiving my wife when that took place. So that was good. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of moments. I got to tell you the examples that you just provided there, I can totally relate to. So it's like you read my mind because my examples would be very similar. And I remember the potty training vividly. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's been over 20 years, but yes, <laughs> I do yeah. remember that. Um you know, you mentioned your daughter um, off to university uh, outside of the city. So that really means that you and your wife are kind of at a different age and stage of parenting now, right? So um, I wonder when it, you know, when she was accepted and sort of the day that you guys dropped her off and then you come back home and it's now a different dynamic. Like, how did you kind of process that? Or like, what was going through your mind? Like now we're a family of three. And, you know, she's away, like, it's just a whole different dynamic. How did you deal with that? I guess that's a nice way of saying I'm getting old. That's, <laughs> what, that's what I'm interpreting from the uh, question. I don't, I don't feel that old, but yeah, I guess we're at that stage now. Uh, I, 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 my excitement for her trumped everything else. I, yes, the house is different. It's much quieter. She takes up a lot of space with her personality. And, and I kind of laughed that I didn't realize you were 95% of the personality in our family. And she kind of chuckles about that. but. My excitement for her was was over the moon. My wife was definitely a bit more, oh, no, you know, our daughter's leaving. And we, of course, we were very um, happy for her to be leaving. And that was never even discussed about being in the city because we wanted her to go off and have a true university experience and not be at home. And, and we wanted that for her. And, and that's something she wanted. Um, but uh, quite honestly, my my excitement for her was was you know, high, high level. So I think I was just able to sort of say, it's sad she's not around. The dynamic of our family's changed within, you know, our household, but um, she's out there, you know, living her best life and, and experiencing something that, you know, I remember experiencing at university and my wife as well. And it's just great that she's able to, to have four years of that now. Absolutely. Uh, finally, David, just curious, is there any sort of advice that you could provide to parents out there like again in the trenches of trying to sort this out on a on a daily basis because you never know what's coming at you really um in terms of you know um parenting today and sort of things to maybe look at prioritizing or because it sounds like you have a very sort of easygoing attitude with rules and, and sort of structure but you know you don't get too sort of up or down uh, as a dad which is i think a great thing but it's not always easy for 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 the average person who's trying to raise kids in a very complex world any sort of advice that you could provide I think my only best advice would be uh, try and be in the moment as much as you can. And I've heard other people say this, and I'm going to say it now. It all happens so incredibly quickly. I think back to when the kids were, you know, three and one. And you know, again, we were treading water. But then you snap your fingers and they're five and three in a completely different stage. And then seven and five. And, you know, they're off to school full days and in all these activities. And now I'm snapping my fingers again. And here we are, one's at university and one's a year away. So uh, it happens quickly. Be in the moment, um, you know, really soak in all the great moments. You know, there's nothing better than a day when your kids are laughing and enjoying 
the time and the and the experiences uh, you, you know that you're having together and it's not about going out and spending money it's about you know just go to play frisbee in the park or you're going you know to to uh, for a walk or whatever the case may be for a bike ride you know those are some of the moments that I'm going to remember you know we've gone on some really fun hilarious hikes I won't get into the details but we <laughs> that didn't at the time seem so funny but we look back and all can chuckle about it uh, and we just had a lot of great family experiences and I think that's what I hope my kids will remember down the road um, when they're parenting about things they want to bring to their children. And um, I think just being in the moment because it happens so quickly is, is the best advice I could provide to anyone. Absolutely. What a wonderful way to, to end this interview. David Amber, a studio host of Hockey Night in Canada on the NHL on Sportsnet. We really appreciate your time and your perspective on parenting today. Leanne, thank you so much for having me uh, on the show. Uh, first, probably last time someone's going to solicit my, my thoughts on parenting, but I appreciate it. And um, congrats to you on your three. That's great. Thank you so much. I have a feeling you're going to be a parenting uh, interviewee rock star. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking that's what's going to happen. <laughs> we'll Thanks see. a lot, David. <laughs> thank you, Leanne.